Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are making a sheath for a beautiful little knife that was given to me by our videographer's father-in-law. And I'll actually be talking about that later, but we're going to be making this out of some scraps, having a little bit of fun and enjoying the day. So let's dive in and make a quick little project. I love any chance I get to work with walnut. It is a beautiful hand tool wood. It cuts smoothly and it is a joy to work with. So I have this little block about three quarter inch thick and I'm gonna outline where the knife is and then put about a quarter inch perimeter all the way around it, just like the glue to. So now what I want to do is I want to take this down to a little bit thicker than the actual width of the sheath that I want in the end. So I want the end of the sheath to be a little over three eighths of an inch wide. Uh, so I'm actually going to take it to about a sixteenth inch larger than three eighths. And that way I can then rip this in half and resaw it into two planks side by side. That when I glue them back together, the, the two faces will meet up. So I can use a marking gauge to cut down the middle, make a mark from one side, make a mark from the other side, and that way I can make sure the two lines come together perfectly, or they'll create two parallel lines that I can saw down between. So then grab the saw, slice it into two pieces, and then we want to smooth these out just a little bit, make sure that they, uh, they will join together, a nice flat, smooth surface, so that when the two of them go together, we get a nice, uh, nice fit between them. Next, we need to lay out where the knife is. So I need the, the width of the knife on there, then I can flip it over and mark out exactly where uh, we need to cut out. I'm going to make this about a 16th inch larger all the way around, so there's a little bit of gap in here. And so I'm just going to chop down very lightly. Going with the grain, you have to be very careful not to split the wood out. So just really, really light taps, just enough to score it down in. Um, if you're steady with a knife, then you can use that to mark around the outside. Then I'm going to put it bevel down and remove the waste down to that. And I'm going to be taking it down to half the thickness of the blade. And so this stabbing motion is a great way to smooth it out and get the bottom really nice. It's, it's too small of a piece to use a router plane, um, but we want to actually then find what that depth is. So I have this little depth gauge that I can set to half the thickness of the knife, and then I can use it kind of as a feeler gauge on here. You'll, you'll feel when it hits the wood underneath, and oh yeah, there's a spot I need to come in. So again, with that uh, stabbing motion, bevel down, it allows you to just peel up and flatten the bottom perfectly. Now let's do a little bit of work in this. We need to attach a magnet. And for that, I need a gouge. A gouge about the same roundness of the magnet. I'll make it a bit larger than we have. You can see the, the round magnet I have right there. I'll leave a link to the magnet and other things that I'm using in the description down below. So we can take this gouge and mark out a little space near the entrance. Chop down a little bit and then pair out and then chop down a little bit and then pair out. And we want to take it down so that the magnet will fit flush inside there. Make sure that you don't go all the way through. We don't want the magnet showing on the outside. I have a bit of DevCon epoxy that I'm going to use, put it in there and apply it in place. Now this might be a little bit of a problem of the, holding the magnet in place because we don't want to actually glue our clamp to the surface. And how are you going to hold that in? Oh, wait, it's a now, magnet. How am I going to go hmm. about clamping? Whatever that? would happen if I stuck oh, it on a piece duh. of steel. Oh, look. That actually holds it in place. You can see how it sucks it down into place and all of the epoxy then glues out underneath. And that is what will hold the knife in place. A little bit of friction. I have a tiny bit of the epoxy sticking up proud, so it acts almost as a rubber uh, friction on there, but then holds it against the magnet. Next, we need to glue these two halves together. So again, with the DevCon epoxy, um, I like this because I can do the project all in one day. I don't have to wear, wait for the glue to set and come back later. It is cured and ready to go in uh, five minutes. I actually wait about 10 minutes in between. I want to apply it completely all the way along one surface, and then I can attach the other piece on and pull them apart and make sure I have epoxy showing on both sides. That way I know I have a good fit between them. Use a bunch of squeeze clamps and make sure that everything is lined up. We don't want these sliding around. We want them to be perfectly matched up from one to the other. In between, you may I may not have um, also mentioned that I carved out a space on the other half so that the knife actually slides right down the middle. So it is in the middle of the piece, not all of the carving being out of work. Now I wanted to do a little bit of addition to this. I made the, uh, the knife handle um, a little bit proud so I can actually shape it down and uh, uh, make it fit my hand. And I really, I like this. <laughs> 
So I can start with a rasp and lay out where I want my fingers and come in with a finer file and a finer file until I get sandpaper. And I'll occasionally be grabbing and just making sure does this fit my fingers? Is this what I'm looking for? And I am really loving the, the feel of this. Especially with the purple heart, it just works so well. And then you dip it into boiled linseed oil and it comes out just looking like this incredibly bright, bright purple. Um, now it's not going to stay like that. Purple heart will uh, slowly turn brown over time. But uh, there are a few things you can do to kind of keep that with like a, um, a UV poly finish. Um, but most of the time I just like to actually tone it down a little bit. It's just a bit too bright for me when it's like that. Now we can test the sheath. Now the glue has dried and it slides in there really nice. Like I want to make sure that it's not going to fall off, that the magnet is providing enough friction that it holds in place. And that is what I want. Now we just want to shape this because I don't want a big block. I'm going to cut off the tip uh, because it is a sloping curve rather than an angle. You have to cut a couple times and then we're going to come in with a rasp, or in this case I'm actually going to use a spoke shape and smooth it down. The nice thing about the spoke shape is I can actually go all the way around that rounded surface and take a curl all the way around it. I want to flatten out both of the other meeting edges and then on the back and then we'll have our rough shape on here. I want to do a little bit of work on this tip because I don't want it to be a sharp point. I'm actually going to come in with a chisel and chop it off and create a, a bit of a, a faceted surface on here because we're going to chamfer everything to it. That faceted surface will then match up with the, uh, with the, the chamfer that will be coming along in here. Ooh, this is just so much fun. Nice sharp chisel taking off little bits until it's just the way I want it. I'm going to flip the plane upside down and clamp it in the vise. I'm not going to clamp the wings of the plane. That's a good way to break the wings off. I'm actually clamping the sole. And then I can use that to cut the chamfer on all of the corners. Um, now this rounded chamfer, I find it easier to cut the chamfer on the tip and then the main section and then come on and meet the two with a file. That way I can get a really nice clean transition from one chamfer to the other, getting that rounded look across the edge. Uh, really, really happy with that. Now the next thing I want to do after chamfering, of course, all the other corners is I want to actually add a little bit of detail in work inside. I was originally going to do some hatch work on the main surfaces, but just the thought of outlining the um, blade inside was what more of what I want. So I set up a marking gauge to create a line going all the way around, and then I can use that to guide these. Now going with the grain like this in a nice straight line, it's very, very easy to just freehand this line all the way down. Um, coming in on the round curve, it takes a little bit more practice so you don't slip off and gouge out. And I think I did that on one of the sides. Um, most of the time I'm going to grab a mallet, but with this straight grain here, you can get these beautiful curls and follow that line along just a little bit in there. Uh, going across the grain on the, the base, I'm going to bring out the mallet and tap it across. That way I can cut across the, the grain without fear of going past and gouging out. Uh, which is a little bit more, uh, yeah, I'm not that good fit. <laughs> so using the V tool, tap it across and we've got our shape on here. Of course, boiled linseed oil, I'm gonna do a couple coats of that and then paste wax. And that is the sheath. You know, it's time to uh, put it together and test it. Make sure everything is the way we want. And I love the look of walnut with boiled linseed oil. It just brings this really warm tone to it and it will keep that tone for a long time. It's a, it's a very beautiful wood to use. Fit it in there, nice little bit of friction. Make sure that it's in my pocket, I pull it out. I'm not gonna actually pull it out of the sheath and make sure that the sheath doesn't fall off. That is exactly all I want. Easy to take on and off, but will not fall off on its own. Happiness, oh yes, I like it. So um, yes, there is the sheath. It's a simple project, uh, but it's a fun one to play with, uh, being able to take out half the thickness on one side and half the thickness on the other and make sure that the knife fits in there and a good fit between them. This is a fun little project that I really enjoyed. So there you have it, a walnut sheath for the Purple Heart knife, and I am in love with this little thing. This was actually made by uh, Luke Milkey's father-in-law, and Luke is the videographer of our channel from Fusion Videos, which you should definitely take a look at. But his father-in-law is actually gonna start selling knives and blanks, and uh, he sent me this one as a thank you because I uh, made a handle to go with one of his last ones, and I thought it would be a cool time to give him a quick shout out. He is uh, new to selling knives, and he'll be making custom knives. You can actually have him make the whole handle, knife, and sheath, or you can just say, hey, I want the blank, and I can make my handle my own, and he can specifically make it to what you want. So if you're looking for a knife that you want to make a handle or a kit for, definitely take a look at it. I'll leave a link to his website down below. 
Now this was a fun one for me. I wanted to make a sheath that would not fall off, uh, something I could stick in my pocket and, and carry around and not think about it you know, coming loose, but not having a strap, something I can pull out very quickly. And I am, I'm really liking how this came out. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If you do have any questions or ideas, let me know those in the comments below. So I think that'll do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Now, normally I would say this is a very nice sheath, but in this case, I have to say it is a knife sheath.